Okay. Pulling up my stuff. It's now. been what a month since you've done? Uh, maybe two or three episodes. Let's see. We did the one with Grant, Kenny. Yeah. So it's probably been a month since you've been on. I don't know because I lost track of the count when I was putting it on my folders. Yeah. I don't know what number podcast. This is sixty-seven, sixty-eight. I don't know. I, I just did one with. Don't think with, so. I mean, I could always check. Shall, shall we? Uh, if it's under new videos, should be podcast. Yeah. So this is sixty-seven. Big 67. In the last month, we've had a lot, but right, could be 67, the big yes. one that uh, we – there's two things that I want to cover with you specifically, which is what's going on in uh, Israel right now with uh, the Hamas versus the uh, Israelis. And mm -hmm. then the other one I want to talk about is the um, Speaker of the House situation because I think a lot of people don't really understand the whole Speaker of the House thing. Right. I don't know that I do either, but okay. <laughs> well, I mean, between McCarthy, like, remember, we haven't talked about it since McCarthy even left. Right. So think of how many people, how many people you've left in the dark who are like, what's going on? I got to go to Mama Cakes for. Uh oh. <laughs> I got to edge him a cake. Yeah. But uh, let me just take a quick look at what you sent me because I know you had some other stuff besides just the. Not really. The bulk of my stuff is all about Israel because I thought that was going to be a yeah, thing. Which is definitely what we're going to talk about. So, whichever one you want to start with. Um, I'd say let's go with the Victor David Hansen piece. Victor David Hansen. Yes. Let's see. He writes. We're definitely going to get gated on this for uh, on YouTube. Why do you think? Why, why is Talking that? Talking about the war or whatever. Oh, you're not allowed to? Yeah. This is another thing you're not There's allowed to There's a couple of things on YouTube. Like, people have been like, why are you guys censoring this? But, okay, so Victor David Hansen. Davis Hansen. Mm -hmm. Who is he? I don't even he's know. He a, he's a political thinker. He works at the, um,. What is he, the Brookings Institute? I'm not sure. Scroll down to the bottom. See, it's Stanford. One of those places. All the way to the bottom. Oh, my God. Did this guy write? Is, wow. uh, go down a bit. Is he on there? Where's his? Uh, keep oh, going are down. you trying to get to his bio? It says yeah. right here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes. He's, he's a The fellow... Hoover Institute. That's right. The Hoover Institute. Oh, okay. Gotcha. He writes some very um, poignant. He, he writes a lot. He turns them out about things going on in politics in the world today and whatnot. <laughs> Right. Uh, I'm just trying to pull up his. Well, can his we take stuff. a step back and give everyone an explanation of what this war's over? Because I think a lot of people, especially our viewers, I mean, some of them are young, so they don't really understand what's going on here. Well, that's why Victor, I started with his piece because he talks a little bit about it. So he starts with the 50th, 50th anniversary war. Mm -hmm. So this was the the war, the October 7th attack was little, almost to the day, 50 years from the last Yom Kippur war the strife between Israel and the Arabs. So he starts by talking about just recently, the Arabs and the Israelis, the Arabs countries have been trying to have some sort of agreement or working with the Israelis, mm -hmm. okay? So keep in mind, Gaza is just one area of Israel, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, of the Middle East, of, of Arabs. There are Arabs, Arabs all over. Right, and they're, the Middle East. The Sunnis, the Shiite, they're different <clears throat> factions, okay? So keep that in mind when you're hearing about people that are speaking. This. They call them the Palestinians, but those are Arabs that are in the area that they now designate as Palestine, which is kind of like Gaza and those areas are where the Palestinians right. are. And the West Bank is another area. Okay. So the reach approachment. So knowing that, right? So now you've got the Arabs, the ones outside of Gaza, trying to reach out to Israelis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so naturally the Arabs in Gaza and the ones those people being supported by, say Iran, also, which is another faction of Hezbollah and whatnot, they're not happy about that. They don't want the Arab world becoming too friendly, or, or not even friendly, but trying to work with the Israelis. Because that's their arch enemy in those areas, mm -hmm. right? As you're hearing so many people protest, kill the Jews, and they're horrible people. Okay. Arabs support the Palestinians. Palestine, they don't want the Arab-Israeli talks to continue. Arabs, the Iranians, they are not Sunni Arab controlled. So it's a, the Sunni Shiite different groups. So a lot of these others are Sunni Arabs. U.S. support for Maha, Maha, Hamas. Hamas is the governing force in Gaza. Mm -hmm. So in general, for a long period of time, you've had these individuals, Palestinians, now called Palestinians, they live in Gaza. The Israelis had taken over that whole area. They had control of it. They sort of sanctioned off Gaza, the West Bank, and the Arabs were living there. Basically what happened, and there's another article that goes into more detail about it, is the Arabs wanted 
the Arabs of that time to stay in that area, in Gaza. They became refugees, if you will, mm-hmm. from the war. Each one group has a different name, like the people from Maghreb, those Arabs who are in Gaza. They're called the Maghreb, whatever. Mm-hmm. They have their own name. So each region, like little mini, for be- lack of a better word, ghettos, right? So they wanted to stay there, but they can't work. They can't do anything without the the allowance of the Israelis to do it because mm-hmm. they control that area. Israel, by the way, is a democracy, right? We know that uh, Hamas, that's not a democracy. Most regions, Arab regions, are not democracies. They're dictatorships. They could be theocracies. They don't like democracy over there. They don't want the people having a say. In many ways, that's counterintuitive to their religion of Mm -hmm. Islam because there's a certain element of control, people's behaviors and whatnot. Having said that, all the Arab areas... They support the people in Gaza, meaning they put money into it to keep them going. They've mm-hmm. given them food, shelter over the years. They, they fund things in that country. So there is some bad blood now between the Arab world. The, when I say Arabs, I mean the average Arab, right, who works, and the Arabs that they're supporting in these areas. Now, if you hear, when you listen to protesters here, they feel like they're under the oppression of the Israelis because they can't do anything, right? right. Whereas in actuality, they've always been built up to be like refugees in that area. And there's another fascinating article that I included in this besides his, where they talk about they don't really want to be their own state. They make a lot of money by being refugees. They don't have to work. Right. Because everything gets funded for them. By usually like the Saudi Arabians and everyone that throws them. Arabs in that area, <clears throat> many of whom are now questioning, you know, why are we doing this? Why do we keep funding this? Every now and then you'll hear people talk about a two-state solution, a one-state solution, meaning do we put all that land under one control, Israeli, or do we have Gaza have their own government and the Israelis have their own government? The, Israeli, the people in Gaza don't have to answer. So they're always trying to look for some way to appease everybody. But in the, in the background, you have to remember, Israel's a democracy. Mm-hmm. That bothers them. Israel turned that area into a enjoyable, pleasant living area. They, they built buildings. They you know yeah. took it to a place where even more Israelis wanted to go. Arabs haven't done that. They become poor and poor in those areas. And this was interesting one of the articles too. They've actually sold land to the Israelis. Right. Made a profit because they didn't have to buy it. They used refugee money from the Arabs to right. do it. Made a profit, then turned around and claimed that the Israelis stole land from them. So this is kind of the game that gets played over there, right? Okay. So uh, for most people, they look at it and say, oh, you know, the Israelis are the oppressors. They take the land, they do this, they do that. They get a bad name. And you've got all the surrounding communities saying, you know, we are Muslim and we, we practice Islam and the Jewish faith is not respected by them. It's not really anything that they, it's beneath them, in other words. Islam is the one true religion. That's literally what they call it. All other religions are subservient to them. So when you have that attitude in the surrounding regions and you've got this group of people that you're supporting, it's very easy to turn on Israel and always make them look like the bad guys. Right. Okay. So U.S. support for Hamas with recent money given to them. The U.S. gave them $1 billion to the PLA, the Palestinian Liberation Army, which was used to pay martyr pensions. So we recently, the U.S., gave a $1 billion towards um, the PLA, Palestinian Liberation Army, which is over there in, in Palestine. They used that money to pay for families of individuals who were martyred who go in and blow themselves up in Israeli territory and kill people. That's a wonderful thing by their standard. They were martyred for their faith. Right. And then they go and turn around and reward the families for for giving up their son or daughter or whatever to do that. And they give them a pension. The U.S. funds that. Not directly, but by giving them the money. By giving them money. It's their money to do what they want with it. And and they boasted that that's what they were going to do with it, that they (laughs) used that money to pay these pensions. Sometimes if the person wasn't killed and they killed other people, they'll pay their pensions. They come home. They're heroes, right? Okay. This is a warped mentality. We're supposed to support Israel. It's a democracy. Instead, we're funding PLA, supposedly for other interests, knowing full well, when they say we're going to use this money for martyrs, that encourages more fighting and unrest over there, right? Right. Uh, the Biden administration uh, 
bless something, the anti-Israel pro-Iran journalist. Okay, so we put in a person in our government by the name of Robert uh, Malley. He's our chief negotiator since the Biden, right. B- Biden administration came in. He's very anti-Israel. He's pro-Iran journalist. He's so the, do we keep using Iran and Israel. So basically you're saying he's pro-Hamas, right? He's pro-Hamas. He's pro-Iran. Right. Now, right. Hamas, just because I think we haven't really given a great definition yet of what Hamas is, right? It's a Muslim governing organization mm-hmm. that their mentality is if you are not of the Muslim faith, you should be killed, right? That's basically their mentality. I think they've said that outright, right? Well, or am I off on that? Tell me if I'm off. It's, it's a terrorist group, and they've proven themselves to be so with their actions. Whether you d- agree with what they believe or not, the attack on another country the way they did it right. is against all standards by everybody, right. which is why you have so much Right. The, the, the problem with this one where it gets a little but dicey. But Iran supports smaller areas like Gaza, and that's run by Hamas, which is a terrorist organization. The people put them into office to right. quote unquote run them but it's a dictatorship so yeah, they elected it's, a dictatorship like a if you will fake government uh like saying it's a fake democracy when in reality it's not a democracy and they never said it is <laughs> okay right? good. That's what iran I mean, is not hear. a democracy saudi arabia is not as far it's not a democracy it's ruled by the, the, the king royal, yeah the royal, family. royal families it's not democracy and that's an important distinction because that's why the u.s is so supportive of israel it's the only democracy over there Right. Oh. Oh. Okay. Right. 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 There's very sense. few that even have the slightest like inklings or, or, or right. characteristics of a democracy, and they're doing well. Right. And that drives them all crazy. <laughs> you know, the Jews are doing well. They they turn that area after they conquered it, if you will. That's why they're labeled colonizers. They came in and took over the area, but they were always there. Right. They just took it and improved upon it, and more moved in over time, and they built settlements, and they bought land from the people of Gaza, the, the Arabs there. That's why I say Iran, because when you're really talking about Hamas is small potatoes, until people like the Biden administration give them money. Yeah. So I just saw a whole thing. I was telling you this, but um, the they were talking about all the weaponry that was over there, and they're seeing all these M16s, yeah. and literally they had a military guy on. I think it was on CNBC or one of those, but he was like, yeah, that's all American equipment that they're using to terrorize these people. Right, and like, that's... It's all, like, that scope is only American, so it has to be from... And it's that stuff that we left in Afghanistan. Right? That's right. Yeah. A lot of that stuff went to the Taliban, who were desperate to get through. They're begging Jordan and um, the country of Jordan and um, Iraq if they could pass through and go down and help their brother Hamas take on the right. evil Israelis. So the one... I don't want to say good thing, but we talked about this yesterday, is... The again, I guess good out of this is right now we're seeing a lot of the people who were like super kind of far left being like, oh, wait, now we're starting to see a problem. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like now us as Americans are like, hey, we have a. The, most people here in America, I would say, are Hamas or anti Hamas, whereas the people who have been supporting Hamas have all just been slandered in this country. Right? Like they, like the the soup. It took out the super far left, if that makes sense. Well, it, let's say it, it highlighted the super far left yes. and how extreme like how they really are. Got, yeah. Right. So you see some people who, like a lot of my friends who are pretty left, like they're mm-hmm. as left as you can get mm-hmm. in some cases. Even they're like, yeah, that person that I've been following for the last four years, yeah. like I can't, like it made me, it opened their eyes. Yes. And I'm not saying that's like a win for the conservatives. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's nice to see after, I mean, arguably eight years now of, uh, a separation everyone in our country is kind of starting to see the yes we in america have problems but when there's like a serious threat yeah. not just who's president when there's a serious threat we can still come together right so again there's very few people that i see who are in america that are pro hamas and aren't getting absolutely destroyed by everyone over it right see so and for instance so. like israel the pro hamas or the pro PLA individuals, pro-Palestine individuals in this country over there would say, well, Israel bombs out children all the time. Right. No, they don't. They bomb the buildings where they house their weaponry and they keep Mm -hmm. humans, uh, civilians in there on purpose because- They know they won't attack. Either they won't attack or if they do, they're going to look bad. 
So they will launch missiles from the other, schools. The other argument I've seen is like the whole idea that uh, for centuries the um, Israelites and Palestinian, or well, see, this is where I get confused. The people living in Israel, the Jews, mm -hmm. have been suppressing the crap out of these people to the point where they've moved and had to form Hamas right. and go by Hamas's rule. But also remember, there are pre-1967, which was another war they had, right. Arabs who live in Israel and love it. They love the democracy. Yeah. They're very happy there. They live a great life. They have jobs. They're making money. They don't have to rely on Arab nations to pay their way. So for the, it's a misconception that every Arab hates them. Now, would you say a little bit of a, I guess, 180 question? Would you say that, and you and I have talked about this, but I just mean for our viewers. Basically, I think the main question for people that have no idea what's going on is what is this war actually over? And I think we, for those of you that aren't religious, it's about an area or a region called Palestine that for some reason, well, historically and biblically, that area is supposed to belong to one of these groups. And that's how these wars started. It's based on like stories of Abraham. Right? right, but for centuries, both groups lived in that region. Right. Whoever had the most power at the time was the one who dictated it. So for many, many years, Jews lived amongst the Arabs. But there was an understanding that the Jews had to submit, they had to agree to the fact that they were the lesser people, literally lesser human beings if they wanted to live and work in these Arab nations. Now, I'm not talking in current times. I'm talking, you know, centuries and centuries. That was the understanding. Yeah. A lot of the Jews left the area, went to Europe and whatnot. As we saw with the Holocaust, many of them moved back to what was originally right. their land. You go through Bible stories who actually was responsible, blah, 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 blah. It's just kind but of wild to me, and we talked about this way. yesterday. It's wild to me that a story that may or may not be true that is tens of thousands of years old, yeah. if not 100,000 years old, yeah. dictated. And again, there's really no, as far as we know, because we talked about this, there's really no historical evidence of Abraham being there X amount of thousands, tens of thousands of years ago. So I don't know... Yeah, you can fight about it, but it's like, what are you fighting over if you have no proof of who owns that land? You're going by stories to decide who owns that land, right? With no real, there's biblical evidence, but there's no like historical evidence that we know of. Again, I neither of us. Well, have done yes, super deep it, dives. it's gone back and forth, and I can't give you the, the full history right. of that area and who is technically entitled to it. It's like saying you we're not supposed to be here. The Native Americans own this land. Yeah. Land yeah. changes hands. I mean, right. Israel won the war. They won the control of that land. For some reason at the time, and I, I could deep dive in the politics of it, they conceded these areas to the Arabs and said, well, we, we, they, we won this land, but you guys can stay yeah, there. They did like the nice thing and said, you know what? We won. We understand, but you can come in. And then many right. years later, they go, yeah, that's cool and all, but now we're going to take more. <laughs> but you also have to remember the Arabs in Gaza and the West <clears throat> Bank. Many of them worked the farms. They worked the regions in Israel. Mm. So it was a relationship that worked for both, right? They got paid. They worked, for, they worked the land. They went back to Gaza. Over the years, though, with all the conflict going back and forth, I don't know that the Israelis were using them more and more. I did say to you recently they were allowing more of them to come over, like 15,000 right. a day. They decided to up it to 20. That well, was yeah, very we, recently. We, we talked about, right, they have something. So what exactly is, and I've heard this, this is just me not knowing, what exactly is the Iron Dome? The Iron Dome is a defense mechanism, right? that they're using, and I think it's a multifaceted, I can't give you a definition of it. No. I gotta ask uh, It's like a multifaceted thing that they use to, for part of their defense. The oh, Iron really. Dome. That's a sick name for, for yeah. defense. Yeah, well, I mean. I think it's, from to my understanding from what I've seen, it's some kind of countermeasure to missiles. Yeah, it's so, a, yeah. It, so my only, I guess, question is, and we've talked about this as well, and I talked about it with our guy who's over there. Mm -hmm. um, how exactly so anything that comes in and out of those walls they know like they know yes, everything yes. then all of a sudden they had this giant um, infiltration I guess you can say of yes. the Hamas and right now even my friend who's pretty high up in that military over there mm -hmm. um, he's like yeah no clue how it got in like there's got to be some kind of there's more to this story again I don't know if it's a conspiracy but 
they're trying to figure out like, hey, how does something like this happen when we have the Iron Dome? It's the Israeli air defense system to protect against short range rockets and artillery. It's an all weather air defense developed by Rafael, blah, blah, blah. Sorry if you guys can hear my dad's TV in the back. Oh, <laughs> yeah. anyhow, that's saying, it's Just saying, because I thought, like, what is that? Right, it's, it's probably uh, uh, heat missile based or somehow it detects something in the air and before it can reach, it shoots off missiles to counteract it in the air right. before it reaches them. The Iron Dome. Gotcha. Yeah. I think that term came, although Ronald Reagan called it something else, um, like the Star Wars or something. We have something similar that to detect it. Uh, before it reaches the air, which is pretty advanced for Israel to have it. Again, right. they they. I just want to point out one more thing when we're talking about this, and the reason why I bring up the U.S. and we have said this. I mean, there's absolute blood in our hands as a nation. Yeah. I, so I, I, I don't want to say well, that. Hold on. Before you go on, Monk, let me just ask a question here because I think you're about to answer it. The next question that I think everyone's going to have is, how does this affect us? And I think we have to kind of look at all the wars that are going on right now between Ukraine and Russia, this one, and then the next potential one, which I think is what you're about to go Well, I think Israel has been a pawn for decades in the sense that because they're so closely attached to us, right, as our allies and the democracy, and we have always said, every politician, you always had to make that statement. We fully support Israel. We, that's our, our friend in the Middle East. Without them, we're lost because we have no friend in that area, right? And that leads my back to what we were saying. The Arabs have the people in Gaza and the West Bank to some extent. They're there for a reason as refugees. They don't want to be. A, a state. They claim they do. But if they become a state, if you will, like, they now have to work. They now have to pay their own housing. They now have to get their own food, get jobs and all that stuff. They don't want that. The Arabs would like to unload them on the area and say, go, be a state. So they support that. However, now you have no leverage with Israel anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Israel is what the Middle East likes to use to draw the U.S. in. And we're such suckers, we get drawn in every time. And this current administration has done it in overdrive. So just my last comment from David Hansen. Biden administration has siphoned weapons from Israel to Ukraine. The war reserve ammo, that's an actual term, war reserve ammo we have for countries in Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay? Understand, now Israel doesn't have the weaponry and the ammo to the extent that they need it because our government in our wonderful relationship and because we fund a lot of things decided to take that right before this attack how interesting and ship it over to ukraine this endless war that's going nowhere right, right. so we have and, and on top of another article i threw in there we have to talk about it in depth is we talked about this in the podcast last month our strategic oil, oil reserves we have 17 days left Wow. That's 17 days, okay? Should we be concerned? Yeah. I mean, fortunately, Especially we have if oil. Especially gas from Saudi Arabia, who's not, who might not be working with us right. <laughs> anymore. So citizens should think about that. 17 yeah. days. So we've but, been dumping this oil. That's that all they, part right. of it. The reason that they can't think about it is because, one, they don't know, and two, they don't realize because it doesn't directly affect them. It hasn't directly affected them yet, right? Right. None, now, of, the, yeah. none of this directly affect. well, it does affect you because you're funding yeah, these things. Right. So every citizen who pays taxes every April, whatever, April 15th, and corporations and out of your paycheck when it goes to government, yeah. all that money is being used for certain things. And as we go back to when we talk about the speaker thing, one of the reasons why they're having such an issue is because some of the group do not want to fund Ukraine anymore. Certain mm -hmm. citizens like myself, I don't want the money going there. Now we're looking at Israel. Well, if I have to support somebody, it's I got to give money to Israel. Israel. Yeah. There are allies over there. But we're getting drawn into a war. As a citizen, it's unfortunate. I understand why, because of what our administration has been doing, that we're now getting suckered into this, right? Because they're going to need money. So naturally, our politicians say, well, let's bunch it all together. Let's just take more from the American citizens and give some to Ukraine and some to Israel. How convenient. Our enemies like to now, you know, and that's another strategy. You wrap a country up financially, and you now we're on the hook. We didn't have enough ammo for yeah. <laughs> Ukraine. We're not making our own. It's an economic war that we are under yeah, right yeah. now let alone what we've been doing for years. Right. And, and then the bad part about this is, let's say, 
there's an argument. Like, let's say we did, again, hopefully this never happens, but boots on the ground, we're actually at a war, right? I think back in the day, probably like 20 years ago, the saying was, we can fight three world wars at a time. That's how good our military is. But I think now they're like, we'd probably struggle with one, right? So if we're fighting yeah. this one, Russia versus Ukraine, and then arguably, well, it's probably not going to be Russia versus Ukraine. It's going to be Russia and Poland if it comes down to that. And then the other one is China versus Taiwan. That's our three right there. We have to help uh, Israel. Right. Question is how long that's going to take. But the, yeah. but you have to ask yourself: Israel's small potatoes. They want the U.S. They want us in this yeah. thing. So how do you rope us in? And they've been setting this fool up for four years now, even beforehand, with the money to Palestine, with the money to Hamas, with the money. Yeah. Now we're draining the ammo of our we democracy. Gave them that, but even if we didn't mean to, a hundred percent, America funded the Hamas whether it be accidentally or whatever, leaving those no, weapons over in Afghanistan was a terrible, terrible idea. Right. And now we're suffering the consequences of it. Right. So and well, I we, say the Israel. And Israel we effect. funded those wep that weaponry under Donald Trump. Yeah. He wound up, people remember, giving up the one thing that we elected him for in the last administration was to build a wall. Right. So they played him and they said, and he knew from the previous Obama administration, our military was a mess. Yeah. We were so underfunded, we didn't know this. All we knew was President Obama was firing every conservative general because yeah. he wanted to change the structure remember, of the military. So, someone brought me, the, our, friend, our Israeli friend even said this. He said, one thing that we forgot, and this is completely on Obama, Obama said, don't worry about it because Hamas is not a threat. 12 years later, Guess what? They're about to take Pal there. They might take Palestine right. and ruin our relationships with Saudi Arabia. Right. Which we need because that's where 99 percent of our right. gas comes from. But my, my point is, it's we've been walking down this road. Right. It's not that it's happened overnight. And Israel is a, is a chip that they've been using for decades. For, yeah. Since I was a little kid, we've been talking about Israel, Egypt, that the Middle East has always been a, a touch point where. It's not like another country where they take care of it themselves. It's always the U.S. that has to get involved. It's always the U.S. that has to either negotiate deals or whatever. Not saying that's a bad thing. But here we sit, and anybody, you know, you know how you always look at wars in school decades later and you study mm -hmm. about them in history. If anybody looks at what's going on right now, they're going to trace it back to administration say this is really when it all started. It was the slow demise of the American military culminating in we had to fund it under Donald Trump, and he dumped a lot of funding into our military. Got all this equipment, you know, right. winds up going to Afghanistan, and, you know, the next administration comes along, walks away. All that tax dollars that went to bulk up our military was flushed down the toilet. And worse, now it's getting used against us right. or our, yeah. our ally, which is sickening to people. That's you know? why the— uh uh, was it the president or one of the military guys in Israel said, hey, America, thanks, but we don't really need you. Because yeah. I know we're just going to make it worse, Yeah, unfortunately. But, right. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, again, I don't know. Do you think that this is going to be a long war? Like, what's the – do you think that this is going to be long? Or what, what do you think sure. Be, uh, Probably. Yeah. Probably. Sadly. So, no, we'll have – yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know what else to say to that. I mean, only time can tell, but – I mean, it's always percolated over there. And from the pictures that I have seen, and many moderate lefties can no longer deny, they're using babies as shields over there. Yeah. I mean, certain things blow away every convention of warfare that we've ever had. And I don't care if you hate Israel. You could hate every Jew you know. Nobody has the right to take the children and hold them yeah, hostage. Yeah, that's the weirdest part. Like, I didn't, they make it seem like kidnapping is so easy. Right, they're taking hostages like crazy. Right, they just go over, pick people up, put them in cars, and then send them back to wherever. I was right. like, what, "Where's the Iron Dome? Where's all this stuff?" Yeah. Right. They, they if like they're the people that you kind of look at them for their border wall because of how strong it was. Right. Well, and there's always and the questions. So there's there's questions because they beheaded babies in, in nurseries. Yeah. And they burn babies alive, supposedly. And there's pictures of it, and I've got the prime, uh, Netanyahu showing these pictures to Blinken, who went over there, the Secretary of State for the U.S., to prove it, right? You always have that question of, you know what, you never know, could something be staged, could somebody, you know, I happen to believe it, but we've learned in Syria with the gas, sometimes they lie. Oh, wow, I forgot about when, that. Yeah. When 
you got Hamas standing there posting videos of themselves with shotguns holding the babies. Yeah, and rocking it's kind of hard to fuck. Yeah. They're making it very that. clear that this is what they're doing. So for all these individuals, hey, there's in no our way country, we're getting monetized on this one, huh? No, <laughs> there's no, zero percent no. chance YouTube's gonna freaking age gate the shit out of this one. No. I'm not saying anything that they're not posting online. That's and, the thing, and though. So uh, next thing I want to get into, and I told uh, the guys that we were gonna talk about this, but Canada doesn't even really know about all that's going on because they've suppressed the shit out of everything. No, Canada's sad. Yeah. It's I was just sad. At, telling Matt about all the. We talked about the podcast stuff. Uh, I was gonna talk about it with uh, Matt. When he was on last week, but right, everything has to be approved by the government in order to uh, be yeah. shown on a podcast. Yeah. So anything they don't even know. I had to tell Matt and those guys about what's going on in Israel because they didn't even know about it. Right. Canada's quickly turning into communist China. It, it's so, a, becoming yeah. a communist country, and they better wise up up there because yeah. how I don't do you wise up if you don't know what's going on? Well, right. they were not happy with Mister uh, Trudeau with the truckers at the time. Yeah. The ones that when he. Debanked them all. Ago. It was a while ago, but that keeps resurfacing as you're having more and more people um, standing up over there. Uh, and, and usually the first comment is, "Hey, Trudeau, you gotta you gotta bank debank them too." That right? guy, yeah, that Constantly guy. Constantly reminding him Trudeau's, of the hypocrisy. Yeah, just a terrible, terrible guy. <laughs> no, I don't know anyone that likes uh, Trudeau, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Speaking of. People, speakers, whatever. Can we go over real fast? I know it's a little old news now, but um, why um, McCarthy was taken out? Can we go through all that? So, McCar well, all right. So when the when we when the Republicans took over the House of Representatives, they made a handful of them: Lauren Boebert, Matt Gates, Marjorie Green. This was back in what January of twenty twenty. Uh, Two, right? That was last three, year. Three, right? So the election was 2022. They started January 2023. When they came in, they made certain requests because they didn't now, want uh, Just so everyone knows, this is for the Speaker House of the House, not— Right. So I'm talking about the House yeah. of Representatives. So you have the Senate, right. you have the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. The Senate is basically evenly divided, 50-50 to Republicans. Republican. And the, the person that makes the deciding vote is the vice president, who's Kamala Harris, who obviously is a Democrat. Okay. But you always have those one or two iffy people that will vote with the Democrats usually. Yeah. Right. So Probably it's not so. really a true, but it's close. In the House, Republicans took over control. Not a huge amount. That makes a difference. Okay. The Speaker, normally the majority party elects the Speaker, but everybody votes. Mm -hmm. Democrats all vote, but they don't have the majority. All the Republicans vote, you get that. And vice versa. That's how we wound up with Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> the Democrats all voted, they chose Nancy. Okay. So now the Republicans are in control. They made some, some. Cons they put together some rules and said, "Listen, from now on, when we pick a speaker, one of the things they said is we're going to put in a motion to vacate, and you only need one person to do it. You don't need a majority to do it. Meaning, if I'm not happy as a representative from New Jersey with the speaker, and I don't think he's representing the needs of our country or maybe my area, I can throw up a motion to vacate, which makes everybody vote." to mean he's got to vacate or leave office and get a new speaker in. Mm -hmm. That's what they one of the concessions. So recently, um, Matt Gates, everybody labeled him a bad guy, but he had had enough of McCarthy. They weren't making the progress that everybody promised the Republican base that they were going to do in terms of the January 6th committee, impeaching President Biden, all the things that were on the Republicans' plate of what they wanted done and why these individuals were put in there, right? Stop the money, the funding of Ukraine, or, or at least the big one that they said when they came in was no more adding to the debt. We right. can't we afford have to it. Have the debt ceiling. We have to put a control on this. We're, we are now $33 trillion in debt. That's obscene. It's obscene. Okay. So they want to stop to it. There's something called a debt ceiling. We won't add any more debt to the U.S. Okay. Everybody agreed on the public side we don't need any more debt. McCarthy goes in there, has to negotiate. Yeah. He could have held his ground and said, we're not doing right. it. But, but let's go back to when he was kind of running real fast. So for those of you that don't remember, right, he said, stop to the debt ceiling. No yeah. more un what's it called? unilateral bills or whatever. Yeah. Where basically, they throw everything, everything in a one omnibus, bill and vote. Omnibus, omnibus bills. Yes, yep. omnibus bill. The other one was the 87,000 IRS agents that they wanted to add. Right. And he said, I'm not going to do that. Right. Now, the reason why conservatives are so happy that he's gone is he literally – 
Like, first off, he was on the edge of no one liking him. And he goes, I'm going to do all this. And then every conservative was like, we'll give you one more chance. Right. Don't screw it up. Right. And not even – it's not even like he screwed up one thing. He did the opposite of right. everything that he said he was going to do. Right. Right? And so that's why – it's great that he's out. I, I think he shouldn't even be in office after that because that's borderline. Like that's just lying to the people at that point. Right. So and the debts- I would rather you be Biden and be wrong about stuff right. like things I don't agree with than completely lying to your own people. Right. So he wound <laughs> up doing the debt ceiling. And come to find out afterwards, he did deals with the Democrats that a lot of Republicans didn't know, know about. about. Yeah. And going forward, the deals that he made that he came out and said, "Look, it's not that bad. We're going to do this. We're going to we're going to what, what we're going to do is it's called um, uh, appropriations. So in other words, you vote on." Each individual item. Do we want to fund Ukraine? Right. Do we want to fund a border wall? Do we want to right. blah, 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 And they didn't do that. <laughs> Came around, he didn't do that. Yeah, at all. Meanwhile, he was telling moderate Republicans, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going ahead and I'm going to impeach Joe Biden. Then he was telling the less moderate ones, I'm not going to impeach Joe Biden. Yeah. You he kept going back that. and forth. He was trying right. to play sides. Right. And, and then it turns out his true colors were, hey, I'm not going to do anything that I said I would. Right. And he and took it, it too far. Yeah. He took it too far. And they had mm-hmm. enough of them, a small group had enough. Matt yeah. Gates put the motion up. They voted and said, yeah, you know what? Get rid of them. Yeah. Right? Now, do Democrats care? Not really. They do care because if Republicans can't sl- solidify around one person, they could get their own speaker in again. Even though we have a majority. Oh, you mean care in the sense of. They uh, could get the. They right. love contention. I, see. I thought they you love they care contention. if he's gone or not. Yeah. Sure. They yeah. love it. We would love they it the Democratic Party. They care in a good Party. way for them, you mean. Yeah. Right. I mean, they don't care who the speaker is, because, yeah. whatever. He does a bad job. They're laughing at it because. It makes us look bad. It makes the conservatives look bad. Well, because. Because they don't have their shit together. And ironically, there is a division in the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. Thank God there is, from my perspective, because it wasn't working the way it was before. It wasn't doing, yeah. you know, we've had these these debt ceilings and everything every time, and one's in power, then the other's in power, and it doesn't improve. So it took a handful to finally say, you know what, we got to change the way things are done here. We're in power, and we have no power. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. How does this work? Right. Yeah. No leverage was being used against the current administration to say no. We're yeah, not raising the debt ceiling. Anyway. Cut your spending. Oh, everybody freaks out. You can't cut spending. Fast forward to recently. Now we're at the point where we need to do budgeting, September 30th. We've known this. Everybody's known it. They could have done it back in June. And what did they do? They go on vacation for six weeks. They come back, and now it's an emergency in the fall. So they're going to default on it, right? They're going to be like, hey, we're going to push it another year? No, everybody <laughs> said shut it down. I don't care. Let Biden shut down our government. It's not really a shutdown in the sense everybody they make it sound like it's Armageddon. Everybody eventually gets paid, but it forces the government to shut down and it forces the other side, whether it's Republican or Democrat, to sit down at the table and say, "All right, how are we going to get the government over, open again?" Because nobody wants that in election year. Nobody right. wants that on their plate that they shut down the government, right? Instead, McCarthy makes an agreement to do a continuing resolution. What's a continuing les- resolution? We're going to keep funding the current president's agenda at 92% for 45 more days. Then we'll talk about it again. So, you, yeah, you just keep pushing it. Right. Keep pushing it until the very last day, which I believe is December 31st. Now it's a crisis. Now now something you can't do, continue. you can't do anything. It's crisis, 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 crisis. Well, that's how you wind up with an omnibus. We don't have time to do individual ones. Throw it all oh, in there, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Force everybody to take a vote where they don't even read it. It's a thousand pages long. Right. You so don't this is the funding. problem with the omnibus ones that yeah. we're talking about. It's not like funding for Ukraine, funding for it, – it's like the most random things in a bill – like uh, one of the things that they get Matt Gates on, like you'll hear this on the left, is the man defended pedophiles, right? He, mm-hmm. he didn't pass a bill for pedophiles. Uh, it got them under arrest or whatever. But the problem is the rest of that bill right. is like money to Ukraine, yep. parks, like stuff like that. And you can't just be like, well, I vote for this one, but not for this one. Right. You have to vote for yes or no on right. all of them at once. Right. It's so all they or nothing. see that, he says, well, no, I can't keep giving money. And then people right. go, oh, so you're defending pedophiles? Right. It's like. Right. It's the dumbest way of doing anything. Right. Like, how do you... 
yeah, these omnibus bills, the fact that I understand, like, in an emergency, okay, maybe, but, like. It's never been an emergency been in an my emergency. lifetime. But also, if you're going to have an <laughs> omnibus, never. make it all, like, Ukraine-based stuff and war-based stuff. Because then there's a, at least, like, somewhat close in, like, what's being okay. done. It, like, you can't have money towards pedophilia patients and then money to right. Tokyo for some it doesn't right. make sense Omni is Latin it means all, all. Yeah. so you throw everything in there so it's bad enough they'll throw in Ukraine they'll throw in Israel they'll throw in things that you want and you'll never know about you know the duck research off of <laughs> yeah it's like know. it's ridiculous right. how, it's, it it's always funding in blue states but the reds get their fair share and that's where you get into pork they throw in the extra pork, the yeah. stuff that, you know, as citizens, I don't the want. The other one that they conveniently leave out is there's always something in there for pay for uh, the oh, yeah. senators. And yeah, they always stuff. get in, Somebody gets an increase, yeah. some government employee. That's why they say yes a lot of the time. But also you have to understand, when you're trying to get people to sign on to this, right, what's in it for me in New Jersey? Right. I'll sign on for it, but what am I getting in New Jersey? All right, well, we'll give you some money towards a bridge. Well, in Carol, North Carolina, they don't care about New Jersey and your bridge money because that's federal dollars. They're paying for it. Right. Well, you know what? Everybody's got to get a little bit of pork, and that's the problem. That's how you get the New Jersey representatives to sign off on it. Give my state something, right. which is their job. You know, you're, you're representing your state. And if everybody else is getting a piece of the pie, you got to sit there and say, well, throw a couple million in at least for my right. state. Because if I'm going to vote for it, I got to go back to my people and say, at least I got the bridge for us. Right? right. Or whatever. So uh, so McCarthy's out. Now we start doing votes for who's next. Who is probably going to be either Jim Jordan or is it Jordan or Jordanson? Whatever. Jordan. Jim Jordan. Jim, Jim Jordan. And then uh, Scalise or whatever. Scalise, Scalise was in there. They took a vote. He won it from the Republican side. Problem is, if you put him out there for a, a, a full chamber vote, he wasn't going to win. They didn't have enough to overcome the Democratic side of votes, right, when you take the whole house into totality. Right. Okay. So Scalise dropped out rather than go on the floor and get embarrassed, right, and, and go to a vote. And you always have to worry because the Democrats want to put Hakeem Jeffries in there. And in some bizarre, weirdo world, if one party's divided, you could wind up with somebody like that. So then that. that way they would have the House, the Senate. They wouldn't have the majority, but he would, whoever the speaker is, gets to sort of dictate what the, what's voted on, how the House is gotcha. run, what how things are done. Same thing in the Senate. The Senate leader gets to do that too. Right. But that's why you still have majority supposedly vote. What you have the problem with is whether you think it's good or bad, very few Democrats have their own opinion. They just follow the sheep. They may not be happy, and there's many who aren't happy, but they get browbeaten to just follow the party Well, that's line. why it kind of goes back to what we were talking about with Hamas, though. They're, even on this, they're pretty separated. Yes. A lot of them yes. are very like, what the hell are you guys doing? Yes. Some of them so, have shown their real. And that's what real... I mean. Like, that's the good come around that we need in yes. this country. So. And it's also eye opening because we were talking about the, the, the squad, the group of five, okay? They're the biggest mouths. They're, many of them are pro Palestine. Oh, they don't want to say they're anti Israel except for Talib, but they're pro Palestine. There's just a very small portion of our country. You would think that they're like 50% of the voters out there. It's when you put them all together in their districts. They're small it's like group. smaller than yeah. the freaking LGBT community. Yeah, they're like <laughs> five LGBT. representatives out of 400, what is it, 450, whatever, in the House. So it's, you know, but it's like everything else with social media. The more attention you get, yeah. you the dominate the go, narrative. Oh, yeah. Right. So, you know, you, you can now you, you see their true colors. Hopefully their districts will see it for those who support, you know, yeah. the Jews or, or are indifferent to the situation. They say, why are we so focusing so much on that? But our problem on the Republican side, or the problem, is they're not united. We've got old school Republicans, the anti-Trump people who don't like MAGA, who want to go back to the way things they used to be. Where we, they call it working together. Other people in this country call it uniparty. They do whatever the Democrats want. It's not like they represent the Republicans. Right. And we wind up with debt ceilings, and we wind up with continuing resolutions and omnibills where you throw garbage in there that people don't want. right? And then you have this other group that recently have been elected that are saying no more. We're not doing it that way anymore. We don't have to. You have the Freedom Caucus and you've got the Matt Gates of the world. So you've got little factions within the Republican Party that will only agree to certain things if their rules are met. In other words, no, we're not funding Ukraine. 
I don't care if we ever pick a speaker. We're not funding Ukraine. So they want to, whoever the speaker's <clears throat> going to be, they want that person to come out and state, what do you stand for before I vote for you? Right. And we love McCarthy. Now we have to deal with kind of the same issue with McCarthy. Is that person going to follow through on what they say? Right? Right, but you still have that motion to vacate. And it worked with McCarthy the first time ever. Right. Well, it was a great was thing like they the did. Shortest, was that like the shortest reign of a candidate? I Except don't for the know. one that died of tuberculosis? I don't know. I forget who that was. That was a couple hundred years ago. Yeah, I, I think they said, ago. I know it was the first time that they were moved, they removed a speaker in that way. Yeah. But not that it's a bad thing, you yeah. know, I, I'm sure. So for those of you that don't know, back in, I think it was like 1910s or something like Maybe that. Maybe early on. Speaker of the House, the guy was dying of tuberculosis, mm -hmm. and then they removed him because of just the safety and the guy who was like, they just needed someone else because mm -hmm. he physically couldn't do couldn't anything. Do this is the first time in U.S. history, to my understanding, that a uh, Speaker of the House has been removed. Well, Marjorie Taylor Greene brought that up about Scalise because he has cancer. And said he can't be Speaker of the House. He's got cancer. You know, it's just too much. You can't do that. Right or wrong, if she should have said that, I don't know. But probably. <laughs> but Fetterman can be a. Back, <laughs> oh, please. But probably reflecting back on you know a similar situation. Maybe she was trying to use go that. Go Eagles! Because she wants. <laughs> every, time, every time I hear Fetterman, I always think of the Go Eagles! Oh, <laughs> Sorry, Fetterman, if you ever see this. Don't apologize to him ever, <laughs> ever, ever. I'm sure you're a nice guy. Ever. No, that's not a nice guy who's destroying her. <laughs> Ugh, people like um, that. So when do we officially get a new speaker then of the House? Is that um, – the, I'm sure as you and I are sitting here, calls are being made. People are running around from office to so office it's probably in going to be D.C. Then, right? That's the favorite so far, but he's got to somehow – they have to jiggle his message so he appeals to enough Republicans, Republicans that yeah. he gets the vote. Because his only knock is that he's pro-Ukraine money. Right. Uh, yes, they want assurances that he'll follow through on the impeachment. They want assurances now. Because remember, now they're saying, well, it's a rush because of Israel. We have That's to get this done because of Israel. Biden. Yeah. yeah we got to so get this done knows. because of Israel. You know, yeah. this is so important now. Now we got to fund Israel. As though we can't do it without, you know, yeah. a speaker. Come on. Well, yeah, right. The, the big knock on the Republicans is, uh, what's his name? Uh, McCarthy gets voted out and they're like, we got to take a week off. <laughs> right. right. So and we need 14 days or whatever. Right. For everybody <laughs> listening, and I'm not saying this is strictly a Republican or Democrat, you know, probably De Democrats would do it too. There was absolutely no reason to take time off. Yeah, zero. There's no reason. Anybody with a set of stones, it's half a brain, who's working, did not need that excuse to take the pressure off. You could still work. They could still do committee work. They could still do a lot of stuff, which, by the way, I'm paying their salary. Get your ass back in D.C. and do work. we got enough shit going on in our country that nobody needs a break just because you can't come up. You should be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Okay? Yeah. You should be able to figure out who the speaker's going to be without. So this is just, you know. The snowflake's freaking out because this has never been done before, and we need a break. So they can go, start lobbying, start you know making backdoor deals to try and get somebody in. This becomes their focus, which should be eye-opening for both Republicans and Democrats. This yeah. is the quality of the people running our country right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. With all that's this going on in the world. Not, not right or left. Right. This is just yeah. kind of goes to show you the – well, you and I talked about this over dinner one day. Like the social media aspect mm -hmm. of what's going on in our politics – of which guys are doing this for views and clicks. Like the one knock that I give uh, Marjorie Taylor Green is like I feel like everything she does is for the gram. Same with AOC a little bit, but yeah. I mean she's kind of. I mean for her it makes a little more sense. But remember what I just said before. Think of the leverage. Marjorie Taylor Green is one district in Georgia. Yeah. Yet name me somebody else you know from Georgia. Right. Exactly. It's it's right. that's what I mean though. It's and like, that gives you some pe some um what's the term some. Ramatas, if you will, it gives you some uh, more of a say when you say something yeah. for better or for worse. Because get your people attention. will see one thing and go, "I'll vote or not vote for that guy," rather than go through all their stuff. Right. Right. Which is arguably why people vote Trump or Biden. It's because it's either you're voting for I don't like Trump or I like Trump. <laughs> right. A lot well, of times. That's, that's, how many? How many? I would say I would make an argument, and I feel like this is a good argument. I would say ninety percent of Americans who vote aren't going to vote based on policy. Okay, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't can't, I can't say yes or no to that. I, I, I feel like that's vote, a pretty fair number. People vote for different reasons. Yeah, but like you, the reason is you're voting for a president. Yeah. Yeah. What but other the, reasons are there? Except no, but for like well, the there policies. Are, there are people that will not vote for Donald Trump just because it's Donald Trump. Right. That's what I mean. They're not voting his policies. On, yeah. They loved his policies. 
they won't admit it, but they loved it. They loved the 401k going up. They loved the fact that we had peace in the world. They didn't appreciate it at the time, but now yeah. look where we're at, we're gonna right? We're a gift horse in the mouth. Right. And now all of a sudden, that's why people will say, so you're still hating those nasty tweets? Yeah. This is what I was so yeah. pissed about. Oh, he's so mean. He's so nasty. That escalated to what we now see as Trump derangement syndrome, where they just see him and they don't want him. They the big one for me is for the January 6th stuff, because everyone says, if only he didn't put out that tweet. And then whenever I ask people what the tweet was, yeah. I have seen eight different, completely different versions of that tweet. And no one can give me a right answer, or a strong answer, of which one's the right one. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, I, it's tough. I, I'm not saying it's a mulligan, like, I'll oh, just forget about it. But can I get one legitimate answer instead yeah. of eight different ones? There's a recording of it. Just play yeah, it. Just play it. That's but what for happens. Some reason, no one plays it. Right. Like, what That's the- what happens every time with that man. He says a lot of stupid stuff, don't get me wrong. But the editing that goes on is ridiculous. Do you know there are still newscasters out there, legitimate people? who still think five people died, five police officers died on January 6th. They will still say that. That has been debunked. That has been totally, you know, non-Trump people have said, yeah, no, they didn't die. Nobody, yeah. the only people that died that day were January 6th protesters, protesters. three people, right? Yeah. They still say it like it's the God's honest truth. These are supposedly legit news people, CNNs, MSNBCs, legit people. How do you expect American people with, you know, that rely on this, to get yeah, proper that's information. Insane. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's just, it's, and now you understand why Trump was making such a big deal about the fake news, fake news. When he started, he identified a problem that's now in overdrive. Now everybody sees it who wants to see it that, oh my God, he's right. They manipulate everything that guy says, and other people now too. They don't care. You know, they just, they'll just say it like it's a truth, and it's not. So, you know, they edit out what some people say, and they say, well, here's the truth. That's not the truth, and it's certainly not journalism. I just want to see these are the – because so, I think someone at the gym was telling me about the five that passed away, the five police officers. Yeah, You're nobody died that's not that day. Thing? No. Well, the lady that One, got shot. Yeah, that's a protester. Yeah, that was a protester. That's Ashley single... Babbitt, the woman that was beaten to death by the police officer. Um, and there was, I think, one other person. That Brian Sicknick died from, you know, overpowered, beaten by rioters. No, he was not. <laughs> he was home the next day. He died of a heart attack like a day or so later. I don't even know what, what, what this oh, thing is. See, it says, so it says he returned to his division after collapse. The police facility said in a statement he was taken to the local hospital where he was to come to his No, injuries. it's not true. <laughs> I don't know who this is. Okay, Ashley Babbitt, she died. That was the woman that was shot. Shot, right. Uh, I don't know who Kevin Greenson Green is. His wife, did you do blood pressure? She did not want him to travel to Washington and believe that the election had been... Okay, so this is a rioter. A rioter. And Roseanne sorry. Boylan, the woman that was beaten to death. They claim she died of a drug overdose because she had been an addict years beforehand. She was beaten. Benjamin was the founder of the pro-Trump website. Oh, wow. But how did he die? His website I don't even know, know who he is. Died of a stroke in Washington. Yeah. Oh, huh. But the narrative was five police officers, five police officers. Okay. Yeah. So no. So you're telling me no police officers died that day? No. As far, to the best of my knowledge of everything that's been reported oh, by legitimate news sources, nobody. Oh, you can't go by the Times anymore. Yeah. The Times is a disaster. And I don't. What's the date on this? Oh, uh, probably a while ago. This is just. Uh, I don't see the date. Probably at the bottom, right? Uh. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. A version of this article January 12, 2021 Well, yeah, that's what it is. So we'd have January to look 6, So, But even on here, so even then Back then they didn't say that there were more than f- Five police officers So, there was, yeah, where did that come from then? I just, yeah, it, this is just fake <laughs> news so, so Somebody just, puts it out And they go with it because it sounds terrible That these January 6 insurrections Killed five police officers but It never happened, no, police, yeah. no. Oh, yeah. And now years later, when you for the American people listening, I would urge you, with an open mind, to go listen look, yeah. to some of these cases and what's going on in Washington, D.C. <laughs> it is unfreaking american Again, YouTube, I understand you're not going to monetize this or even show this, but this is, <laughs> I'll have to well, clip this one out. <laughs> fine. Edit it out and put it on Spotify yeah. so somebody can hear. It's. I just read this a story last night. This is going right to rumble. Because <laughs> it was amazing. A father was arrested right. in front of his two little girls. Right. He went there with his father, who's in his 70s, a green, purple art recipient, recipient, and I think his brother, too, went. 
They were standing outside. There were open doors. There were policemen there. They needed to use the bathroom. The policeman said, yeah, sure, go in. Use the bathroom. Went in. The bathrooms were too, it was too much of a long line. They left. He was arrested. The FBI had been monitoring him while he was at Home Depot days beforehand for going into the Capitol as an insurrectionist. He's looking at him like, are you kidding me? The door was open. The policeman said I could use the bathroom. They got him. Wow. Okay, well. He got off pretty easily. He had, like, community service. He has to pay a fine. He didn't go to jail. But he fought it. What happened? Speaking of jail, what happened to Bowman? So for those of you that don't know, think, talk about things that got swept under the rug. A couple of weeks ago, we had this vote to shut oh, down. Oh, nothing. The, nothing yeah. will happen to him. So right, think of this. All the people that stormed the Capitol, right? So... They stormed the Capitol January 6th. They all got, what is it, like 22 years of prison? Oh, some of like them that? got, yeah. Crazy. All right. A couple weeks ago, a man who happens to be, what is he, a, uh, a representative. Representative, representative who was once a school principal In New York. Yeah. during the middle of voting pulls the fire alarm, which is 22 years in prison, yep. right? He goes, I didn't know it was a fire alarm, and now you don't even hear about it. No. That's how swept under the rug this shit is. Yesterday. Or two days ago, Santos, you know your your buddy, yeah. the so, crazy guy. Yeah, he met your buddy. <laughs> I don't know. You mentioned it, but yeah. I don't know what the deal was. I don't even care. All I know, as a citizen who's looking for justice and equality in this country, he's screaming at some pro Hamas people who are in the Capitol, uh, protesting, if you will. And my first response is. What the hell are they doing there? Did we learn nothing from January 6th? Right. It's 22 years. Right. How yeah. are they allowed in there? This crap's been going on. We saw it with Kavanaugh. We saw, depends I mean, on how many people want to fight for it, right? It depends on <laughs> if it's a, yeah. whether you're if it's, a MAGA, if it's Trump. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like that That kind of goes to show it, too. That's like the real icing on the right. cake. That's like, hey, this is real. We're flaunting in your face right. at this point. Which is why I say, and I'm talking now to liberal America, Democrats, if you will, yeah. non-Trump people. Open your eyes to what your what you want your country to be, because someday it will be you if you don't stop it now. And I know you hate Trump, or if you do, you don't, whatever, and you hate MAGA people, whatever. You got to ask yourself, what's the mm-hmm. definition of First Amendment? And right. going to the Capitol, yeah, don't break windows, you don't do this. You got people that they arrested some guy who wasn't even there that yeah. day. Remember, well, remember, like a month ago, the guys that went into McCarthy's office and just yeah. sat on the ground in there and exactly like, yeah. like that's insane these people right. got even further than the january 6th people right. all the way into his office right took took a seat and they were just right. like yeah we're gonna protest in your office lobby right not even outside the building in his office lobby like his door right. is literally like right here in comparison to where they are now that's it's up to the doj to prosecute these people but at yeah. a minimum if i was mccarthy i'd call capitol police and have them escorted out yeah. if you want to protest you had you ne- since january 6th you have to be not only outside but past a certain fencing area because that was the law but that somehow they just got in <laughs> are currently being yeah. prosecuted they just walked in this is people. the part that drives us Americans, I'm not saying I'm saying American citizens who care about justice for all. You can't have it different ways for different groups. That's a very bad thing in our country with the First Amendment. Yeah, and from it that just separates tri- us else. even more. Like, exactly, that's the, that's the whole aspect of this, and that's why I said it's kind of a little bit of a, again. I don't want to call it a blessing, but because of this war that's going on between basically, I don't want to say Muslim versus Jew, but. Uh, Hamas versus Jew, I guess, is probably the better way of putting it. Um, it's kind of brought us a little bit together because the mindset's like, oh, these people are terrorists. This is not. Well, Hamas made a mistake in many ways of highlighting just how bad they are. Oh, and they're yeah. trying to make it, they're trying to spin it, especially the pro Palestinians here. Israel, the, I hate the Jews. Israel is just as cruel as just they bomb buildings and whatnot. They're not wrong in saying that. But you have to start asking yourself, what's considered defensive? Yeah. What's considered so offensive? offensive. Yeah. What's a terrorist act? Well, you also have to think of the indoctrination over there. Like, I have a friend who uh, lives in Turkey. And I asked her once, like, what does she think of? I forget what it was. I forget what exactly it was. But it was like, it's something that we would. D- I, I asked, uh, like, jokingly, like, that's pretty racist. Like, isn't it kind of racist what you're saying? And she goes, well, no, because they're not people. I was yeah, like, what, yeah, what yeah, do you yeah. mean? Yeah, no, I was yeah, like, what yeah. do you mean they're not people? Like, that's how, like, we as Americans don't understand how different it is. Like, racism is like if I was making fun of someone for their skin and whatever and mm-hmm. jokes, whatever. 
But she she said, and this is literally how they are taught over there, and that's just how different it is. Yeah. They're not people, so you can't be racist towards them. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, I was there's like, hold a, on. There's a woman, they don't see them as people. I'm trying to find her name. Cause I can't, I'm going to say it wrong, but it's like Ali Harsani. She's a woman, a Muslim. She's a modern-day Muslim. Mm. She's been you know, a victim of every possible thing of her faith. She still is an, a, a Muslim, a follower of Islam. Mm. But she speaks out against things like, these terrorist groups and yeah. she's been westernized and she she just commented on this and she says you have to understand from a young age i was taught to hate jews yeah you just hate jews. like it, that's how they're in doctrine right right, right. So, she says i understand why they think this way she's not agreeing she says but people don't appreciate you were taught to hate jews yeah. and it's funny my mother for those of you who don't remember her when she was on the podcast her her family is from Germany, right? And when she was a little girl, she had to hide the fact that she was German in the U.S. Yeah. because she would get World such War II. yeah, she would get such flack. But she just said recently when I saw her, she goes, "I just don't understand, Irene. Why do they always hate the Jews? Why does everybody always hate the Jews? Taking it out on the Jews." And I just looked at her. And I go, "You know, Mom, I think it goes back to biblical. I really do. I'm not saying I'm not endorsing it or whatever, but." It's just one of these things. They're raised to hate the Jews in that region. They just, you know, it's it's ingrained in yeah. them. They're it's lesser human their, it's beings. It's just their indoctrination, yeah. Well, and I told like, you, this that wasn't was just the... one friend. This is like, I have a couple friends in Turkey in that area. They all say the same thing. Yeah. Like, it's it's an indoctrination of their society. Yes. Yeah. And I, I would like to say that many of the Muslims here were not raised in that environment yeah. and don't see that. But that's another thing we learned from what happened in Israel. Right. Now we're seeing we don't just have those Muslims in this country yeah. the, anymore. The other problem, yeah, I mean, that's another topic. But yeah. uh, the the other half of this, and I think that people don't really understand, right? The Muslim faith is, I believe it's the biggest faith in the world. Like Islam. The, the Islamic mm -hmm. faith. But there's so many different sects of Muslim. Like, it's not like... It's not like you have Roman Catholic and then Greek Catholic or whatever it is. Greek Orthodox, or, or, yeah. Greek Orthodox Catholic. It's like, hey, these Muslims, they believe in peace, love, everyone's equal. And then there's ones that are like, oh, you're not Muslim, so my religion says I can kill you. Right. Like, well, literally. there's Shi'i, there's yeah. Sunni, there's different it, like, factions of Muslim. It's insane the levels of like full different spectrums of one religion. But, but that's my point. When we had 9-11, there was an enormous push to remind people that the Muslim faith is not a terrorist faith. Right. It's not cruel. It's not this. Yes, that's true in the Western world. That was not, not true, true in the there. Middle East. Yeah. Okay? And that's why you got the weird indoctrination. Right. Here. So because we swung the pendulum so far in our country to assure that we that's didn't it. attack you know, one religion because of the actions of a few people, which is true. You don't do that, okay? Because we saw this so far, everybody came became so accepting of uh, of um, Muslim refugees and you know, bring them in our country, blah blah blah. All fine, but you're bringing in a mentality that's very different than the Muslims who were here that before nine eleven. That is 9 destroying England right now. Destroying for those England, don't know. destroying Germany. Yeah. Talk about things that's not talked about enough. Like all these refugees that the left wants in, no more wall, whatever. Yes. Go look at what's going on in England right that's now. I right. bet you guys haven't even heard about right. it. That's how effed well, up it is over you've there. You've now seen it here in this country with yeah. these protests. With every college kid or college Yeah, we kids just found out, out all these kids that are pro that's terrorism. Right. That's like, right. Holy, like, that's it's wild. Been, it's being ingrained in them in the universities. Right. And now we're seeing it. You're seeing comments from people. There was just a billionaire couple, couple that was resigned from Harvard because of the comments of the administration yeah, at Harvard, that's insane. right? And for allowing these people to say about, they happen to be Jewish, right? To say what they were saying about Jews was just, this is not America. Yeah. Again, that's because we have a new culture coming in and it's here. And that's why now all of a sudden it's shocking to a lot of Americans who said, listen, 9-11, we supported the Muslims. We supported Islam. We, we, you know, we didn't go after that religion, even though yeah. they attacked us. But it's we've let more people in from that side of the world where they do believe this. Yeah. And they're bringing that indoctrination here and into Western worlds. When I say here, we're included. Canada. Yeah. Oh, man. Europe. Yeah, Canada's a nightmare right now. Right. It's not looking good. I'm going to be honest with you guys. It makes me sad. <laughs> I just saw the Polish premiere on BBC. It might have been an older one, but she asked him, you know, you have not taken in one uh, refugee. It won't Islamic refugee in your country. No, I haven't. And I will never. 
and I refused to do it because we are a safe country. We don't want them in here. Yeah. He sounded terrible, and maybe this was an older interview, and she just was shocked by this. But you know what? He's right. Yeah, you have to look at statistics. I mean, they haven't had any problems. And right now, I mean, I I dare you to go look up what's going on in the UK right now. They are pillaging. These refugees, again, I won't get angry, but these refugees are doing unspeakable things to the people in Britain right now. And they're just like, oh, well, we allowed them in. They're good people. It's like, hey, your crime rates in every facet have gone up. 400 percent you like you gotta you gotta really look at it it's i don't even want to get into it because it just makes me so angry well and you have to also remember too it's not true yet here but it might get to that point england definitely it's not just a religion it's their way of life they have what's called sharia law and they have to follow sharia law okay yeah that is contradicting to democracy yeah and this is what's so let's get into that real fast so because we asked why is this not considered a holy war or what separates Mm -hmm. from holy war this is baffling to me and i don't understand how every country in the world has been like oh we have to get rid of this sharia law stuff like it, it literally says my religion says that i can kill anyone that's not of my religion Right? I can do harm to these people. Mm-hmm. So the reason that no one goes after them is because it falls under religion. So it follows different rules mm-hmm. to certain to war, rules of war. Right. Which, talk about bullshit in my opinion. So to me, that is, the Sharia law, people who follow Sharia law, that is a terrorist organization. Well, I, I, if you I, follow it to the T. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. you, there's a letter of law, say, there's a spirit would, of the law. Yeah, some are more literal say, than others. I would still say, and I would love for someone to find this in any other religion, mm-hmm. any religion or biblical text that says, this person is not the same religion as you, so you should be allowed to kill them, is not, that's not normal, right? We agree with this. I think we're all agreeing with that. I don't think there's well, anyone in the Bible I, that says that. I get, well, the Bible's different. They have the Quran. Right. And their, their leader made that expressly clear these are infidels they are yeah. lesser if that's you are a, not so that's tr- a problem right well, that's a terrorist organization yeah they, that, i mean that hides behind a religion i think that it's how it's interpreted and i think that some if you got a, an imam in here who's a equivalent to like a rabbi sure who would look at certain aspects of Sharia law and say, well, that's what it says, but that's not what you're, it's supposed to mean. It means we blah, blah, blah. You know, like we're supposed to encourage people to become of the faith and they're dead to us, you know, spiritually, whatever. I'm I'm saying this as like yeah. they justify I'd it. love to see how you justify that one. I'd well, have to get... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very easy, you know, Christianity has its share of... of evil. Oh, absolutely. Every religion yeah. has its share of if evil. If you look at the whole Old Testament, God's kind of a... Difficult, difficult, it's difficult person. Yeah. right? Right, but the, no, there's nowhere in there that says this religion that you follow, its job is to take down anyone that is not part of your religion. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not an expert on every faith and every wording of every, but yeah. no, the, what I have studied, no. The Old Testament is very, a very strict God in the hopes of helping the Jews, right. the chosen people. That translates forward to what would later become, because our faith is based on Judaism, right? Right. Jesus was a Jew. That carries forward into the New Testament because it was being made as an example of the chosen people. The Jews are the chosen people. And and I'm giving a simplistic version, but it was God's way of saying, they're going to be my example. They're going to turn away from me. They're going to get treated like crap. That's a message to the world that I'm the one true God. Okay? Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, there are some crossovers with Islam. Like there is their atonement day. I just read this recently. Yeah. Some being comes called the Mada or whatever. And I'm not well versed in it, and I will say that. But he comes with Jesus. That's part of their – like right. their, their, there's a crossover. Right. It's be- that, bizarre. That's fine. I get these crossovers and stuff, right. and that's kind of the difference between a westernized Muslim versus – Catholic or whatever versus, or I should say versus whatever the hell's going on over there in Israel. Well, that's what I'm saying. You have people, inter- different groups interpret things differently. In this country, I'm not saying all now, but, you know, oh, Muslims were able to get out. along. Okay, okay, you talk to Dad, you yeah, know you're going, okay. Mike's He's doing safe, the podcast please. tomorrow. Okay. Um, what time are you coming back tomorrow, Mike? Uh, hopefully the afternoon. Okay. Uh, you, you have, you know, a certain Sharia in this country. And by the way, there's Jewish law too. Jewish has laws too that they 
can use sometimes in the place of our laws if they decide to decide things within their faith. I never knew that, learned that fairly recently. But having said that, it's a different interpretation in different parts of the world, right? Yeah. People can corrupt a religion however guess, they want to. I guess to. that's kind of what happens, though, when you have literally two billion people in your religion, right, in your faith of uh, Islam or whatever the— but you know, Chris, you can make that case right now what's going on in the Catholic Church. I'm not happy with what's going on in, in my church. They're corrupting my religion, in my opinion, the leaders of my church. And, you know, does that mean I have to follow it? I no. I don't plan to if if they wind up, you know, obliterating the core meanings of my faith. We're actually pretty we're actually not as far off as I thought. So which religion has the so Christianity followers is two point four Billion Islam is one point. Yes, nine. Christians are. Well, what's the date on this? Because they are catching up to us. The Muslims are catching up to this the is Christians. Just the first thing but that I see. having said that, I mean, I'm just trying to have you understand. It's rules are what they are. People corrupt the faith however they want to. You know, right. there are, in present day there are some people destroying Christianity. In my opinion, this is 2017 in some regions, but. I do not see them taking it to the point where they're terrorists yet. We yeah. have had that in our in our faith, terrorism, right. Spanish Inquisition, all that stuff. But, you know, it's like we're going backwards in the where we haven't I feel like the Islamic faith has not progressed in that part of the world. I think we made strides here in the western world, mm. but these are people if you're Muslim coming here, you knew it was democracy. You knew your your faith just like Christianity is it's woven into our our structure, our government, traditionally, although people are denying it now, but our f- country was based on Christianity and belief in God, yeah, and until you know, we had separation of church and state. But yeah, but even still, a lot of our things are based on Christian morals and Christian our, our judicial yeah, system. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Right. right, you swear on the Bible. Right. Still. So, and people come to this country, like it or not, whatever you believe is subservient to our constitution. Oh, interesting question. So if you're someone, let's say you're a Muslim and then you go to court and you have to swear on the Bible, how does that work? No, they don't swear on the Bible. You can swear on the Quran. You can swear oh, you on can. something else. Okay. Yes, yes. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. But either way, it's it's going to be a shitty next couple of years, I think. Well, for what it's worth, people have been saying for, and to my mind, at least the last two years, if not more, keep an eye on our border. People are coming in who are not fr- – and I'm not just talking South on, America. On the bright side, They're coming though, from least, all uh, over the world. Apparently, there's only 20 miles left on that wall that was supposed to not be done by Biden, remember? Right? Yeah, well, I, I don't put your faith in that because yeah. they're still coming in. And I heard some gross number of like a million a day. I mean, the, how could – we cannot subst- – oh, I'm sorry. We cannot sustain that. Uh, sustain that. I just don't – Numbers like that just floor me. I mean, you can't deny it anymore. Citizens would have to go down there. We'd have to fall a human sh- form a human shield because we just, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's a million like sounds like a crazy number. I know, number. it's absurd. I'm like, where, where are you coming up with that number? I would look it up, but I don't want to see the answer. No, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it's, it's not even, I mean, the numbers are bad enough. But if we've learned nothing from what's going on now in the world, it's it's who's coming over. Yeah. And the apprehensions of terrorists, it was like two a year. Three a year. Now it's like 40 or whatever. 157 this year yeah. alone. Yeah. It's like, or 53. It's a problem. Okay. That they apprehended. That tells you how many actually got in. Because it was two or three people when it was 40,000, 50,000 coming in. It's 153 and you got millions coming. I think we're up to 2 million since Biden took office. Yeah. Of 400 people coming in, if not more. And it's not stopping anytime soon. Back to why we're saying one of the things the speaker said. He was gonna work close to the wall fund the he wall. Did, yeah. He can't close it, but he's gonna fund it, right? And you can squeeze the administration and say, and you can impeach my orcas, the person running it, and send a message that you can't just let people, people in. in. Yeah. Stop telling us you're not because you, you are. Let's say you did have closed borders. Does that mean that you have to close north too? Do you have to close from Canada to? U.S. as well? Only if there are people coming over yeah. illegally, but you can control that. See, it's not yeah. – the wall is definitely necessary, but the current administration has bypassed the wall. They're now flying them directly on airplanes into other into parts of the prison. country. So they're not coming over the Rio Grande. They're not coming to the water. And they're coming in droves, and we don't even know how many. And nobody will tell us where the flights are coming from and where they're landing, middle of the night kind of thing. Yeah, Citizens don't know this. No one's reporting on it, except for a handful of people on, on sites that are showing you that happened. 
their policies is what's different. So they're saying, no, no, we're telling them they have to come back. We're giving them a court date to come back. It's called catch and release, you know, or whatever. You give them the date. They're never coming back. They yeah. didn't come back before. Yeah, we talked about that on the last right. podcast we did together, I believe. So they're saying, well, we're following the rules. We're trying to shut it down. But they're really not. They're circumventing the policies that we had, that Title whatever nine, whatever it was, that Trump had put in, Title 42, I think Title it was. Title 9 is uh, the college one. Title 42, I yeah. think it was, to keep people with diseases out during COVID. That worked really well. Then there was the Remain in Mexico, meaning you could come to America, but you have to stay in Mexico first till you get your court date. They threw all that out. But. Some people just came in. You don't need a court date. Just, sure, I'll come. And they just got into this country. Then we saw over the last year people being bused to different areas. And that's what's having a big effect. That's why you're hearing about the border wall. Not because of the people coming over, but because all these immigrants are now in New York City and Chicago. They don't know what to do with them. And they're encroaching on the traditional traditional democratic base, the people living in those cities. They're losing their base for the next election. It's people like, get them out. This is my kid's school. What are you bringing immigrants in for? Well, guess what, people? You voted for that. You voted for sanctuary cities. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. Everybody votes for this shit, and then when it hits the fan, they don't want it, like the people in Martha's Vineyard, right? Right. They got them out fast. Well, they don't. They have money in Martha's Vineyard. The low-income people in Chicago's, what is it, North Side, whatever it is, where it's poor. You know, they're, these poor individuals, working-class individuals. They're dumping these immigrants in their children's school, which, by the way, it's not summer. They're putting them in while the kids are in school. And these people are screaming at their town halls, get them out. We don't want them. Well, But what do you mean, just like they're in class? Or what are they talking no, about? No, they use space in the schools. schools They'll put to... them in the gym. They'll put them on the That's football insane. field. That's insane. Right. Wow. Right. In New York, they were talking about shipping them up to upstate New York to the hotels in the winter because people don't vacation up there. So they want to put them up in the hotels up there. That's Which, by the way, where are they supposed to get jobs up there? Yeah, it's a they're, seasonal yeah. place. So they're not getting jobs. Yeah. That's for you Americans listening to pay for them. Their housing, their food, and they're kicking out American citizens from these hotels because the owners get more money from the government. Government, right? God, mom, this is turning into the doom and gloom podcast. I every time I have my mother on, it's the doom and gloom podcast. <laughs> Share this we, with your friends and family. We, it's like dinner every ha- night. If they're having a good day, yeah. send this to them. Now, now you all understand about Chris dinner every night at the table. This is what it yeah. dies into. <laughs> it's like, but I'll say this: we, once Chris, you have, why are you eating so much faster <laughs> lately? <laughs> once you get a glimmer of sunshine and you try to have like a happy, you know, oh, let's talk about Taylor Swift and Travis. <laughs> yeah. Next thing we got invasion or a, a terrorist <laughs> attack in Israel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How funny is that? Right. Well, that's what I was saying the other day. Or I was thinking I should say I'm on Twitter and I'm seeing bombings and then Travis Kels. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how. Uh, do, 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 yeah, right. right? Yeah, how do you that's, expect that's citizens social media. to? Yeah, right. That's just right. how it works. But either way, we just did an hour twenty. I know there was a bunch of other things to talk about but i mean i don't i there's i feel like that's a good place to end i don't know if i can <laughs> handle any more mother but uh gotta detox yeah i gotta <laughs> detox so the next couple weeks are booked up with guests which is good um the only things that i have to moat uh what am i finish? chop wood basically <laughs> <laughs> where's my is my lava cake down upstairs no. um oh that's true mike left his yeah, lava mike cake, left his lava cake and got a second one so i get two right no is that no. <laughs> so the only things i have to promote um Lies of P is done. I finally finished all those videos. Let me tell you, that took, I said this on the podcast, that took way longer than I thought to do. What's, oh, Lies that, of That's P. the Pinocchio game I told oh, you about. Oh, right, right, right. But I did a walkthrough, so I would post two videos a day on it. With a surprise thinking, ending. Because there's not, there's not that much, like, editing to do. But I was posting two a day, and it was so much, like, render time and uploading, uh-huh. I couldn't do anything else for two weeks. <laughs> so I haven't posted any real videos or anything except for those because there was no time to edit anything. But um, besides that, uh, we just started the Lords of the Fallen game, so we'll put those out on the live stream. And then, uh, yeah, just tomorrow is the Wolfenstein DLC 1, so this will come out. This comes out Monday, so by then, go check that out. And then that's pretty much it. We'll just continue with Lords of the Fallen at stream tonight, and hopefully I will see you guys. Well, I'll see you guys on stream, and Mom will see you probably in another month, maybe? Depends. Depends on whoever's on, because I know... Mike's doing it. Surprise guest week after that. And then Matt wanted to do one more. Who's Matt, the surprise guest? Uh, Big John. Oh. Coming. So, uh, it's coming here? Yeah. But clean the basement. Is it okay if you have a convicted criminal, Ellen? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> but I uh, know we ever talked about But John's cool. He'll be on. Um, 
but I think it was a little nervous. But he, John, it's so funny because he's such a he's like a muscular dude. He's a scary looking dude. You'll oh, meet nice him. You'll babe. like him. Okay. But uh, he's like he's like I'm too scared to do a podcast. Oh come <laughs> like, on. No, <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, no, he's he's great. He, but yeah, so we'll end it there. Social media down below. Promo codes down below. Discord down below. And uh, all the other streamings down below. And hopefully I will see you guys on Monday and you'll see mom soon. So later. Bye.